What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode here on the eAssist Dental MBA podcast, where I am spending time with some of the amazing people in our dental profession. And we're talking a little different in regards to the business side of dentistry, their story. And very, very excited to have with us today. I'm just going to go out there and say Dr. Nacho, because that's kind of what sure. you know him as. But formality wise, Dr. Paul Goodman, pleasure to have you, Doc. How are you doing? Thanks, John. Really excited to talk with you guys. Love what eAssist does, what you do to bring to life one of my favorite things, BTL stuff, bring to life stories so that we all learn to be more successful. Perfect. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig into a little bit about Paul's story. I'm going to have him share a little bit about his journey. He's done a lot of great things in dentistry. So I wanted to have him share that. And then I've got a host of questions, some of which will touch on business. Some of them are a lot of fun. You guys may have watched with some of our other guests. They all have the unique stories, but I will just tease this up. One of the questions we're going to get to here with Paul is Facebook jail. That's all I'm going to say. Sure. We're going to get there. And uh, but anyways, so Paul, yeah, let's let's start by just talking a little bit about your story. Sure. I mean, I like to start off with uh, on really positive note that dreams don't come true because I wanted to dunk in the NBA and that dream did not come true for me. I wanted to play for the Philadelphia 76ers uh, growing up. That was my favorite sport, basketball. But I'm a child of the 90s. Uh, ER was a popular show. Uh, a Few Good Men, a popular movie. And my dad was a dentist. I want to be a lawyer, doctor, or dentist. And I chose dentistry for a variety of reasons. I had the best, most amazing dad to kind of tell the whole story. And we worked together for 11 years before he passed away. But just an awesome mentor. But he never pushed us into dentistry. My brother became a dentist too. But he always talked about the value of being your own boss. So I was attracted to that. That was part of my impetus. I liked helping people, uh, science type person, like a lot of, you know, uh, kids of the 90s in, in, in New Jersey. That was a common thing. So that is what attracted me to dentistry. I went to Villanova where I could watch great people play basketball. Uh, I did the seven year program. So I did one last year, three at Villanova, four at Penn. And then possibly I'm, I'm big into dental decision making and life decision making. So I like to authentically share up front one of my best decisions helped by my dad was to do a general practice residency. He said, don't come practice with me right away. Go to a general practice residency. I worked at Albert Einstein in Philadelphia. I stayed there for three years. And back in the early 2002 to 2005, if you saw someone walking around with a cell phone in the early 90s, you thought, ah, who's going to use all these things? And now we all have them. Well, back then, John, it was very unusual for general dentists to place dental implants. And I was incredibly lucky to be at a place, Albert Einstein in Philadelphia, that represented what was right with dentistry. They taught us to place implants, they taught us to be great dentists, and I love being in a hospital system. And interestingly, being a chief resident and fellow really taught me a lot about business, running teams, systems. So that's a bit part of my journey. After that, I joined my father in practice in Pennington, New Jersey. Uh, we purchased additional practices. I work with my brother, but I'm the type of person, I guess since I started Dental Nachos, I always like stuff with a lot of toppings. So I'm a practice broker, founded the Dental Nachos Facebook group. At, at the time of this recording, I have to say I'm doing my first in-person lecture this week. I got a haircut for the event. And uh, I usually speak to dentists 50 to 75 times a year. And this is the first in-person lecture that I'm having coming this week. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, got to be right to be on stage. And I'm sure you're probably like, even if just one person shows up, right? You're like, you're going to give them yeah. the best oh, yeah, they, presentation I was, ever. In Harrisburg, PA, and I'm in PA, and I, I've been there before. But part of me was like, I'm not so sure. But I'm like, you know what? I get to get out of my house, do what I like to do. And also, this is what I want to share. I just want to veer off because I imagine you're kind of like me. Nobody cares about the extrovert during the pandemic, okay? Nobody says, hey, extrovert. Did you miss hanging out with people? They should ask us because it's not easy to be an extrovert during a pandemic. Also, probably yeah. for my family, not easy to live with an extrovert. So I'm excited to kind of get back out to some face to face events. Could you imagine if like during this pandemic, Paul, like Zoom went in and they had like a category for all like the extrovert Zoom meetings and then all the <laughs> yeah, introvert yeah. Zoom meetings and you oh, know what that's going to look like? Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. So uh, again, you, you have accomplished so much in dentistry, but I think what I've always admired about you is that you've been one to bring to the forefront, like what you've struggled with, right? You, you, you sure. put yourself out in the public. Like you said, if you, if you have created this following on social media, that takes a lot of courage. And in a lot of cases, you got to be vulnerable and talk about what you dealt with. So could you share with everybody, we're just going to do two, right? Uh, sure. Maybe two challenges that come to top of your mind, um, that you had to deal with and were able to you know, get through them and look back and, and, and take some good lessons away? A really, really great question. I love these questions. One of the luckiest things to be able to do is work with this amazing business coach, Aldana Ambler, who she has actually uh, counseled presidents and grown companies. And one of her things is life is about managing energy. So the challenge for me as a dentist is you don't know until you do it how much 
negative energy you have to manage as a dentist. People don't want to be there. It comes off of them. I know we all joke about it when someone says, I don't hate you, I hate the dentist. That really builds up over time. You know, I, I kind of want to turn this into a fun thing where I tell people, but you like eating and we help you eat. So maybe you should like us. But, you know, people don't want to be there. You're doing full contact arts and crafts in a small environment on people who don't want to be there. So really the challenges that I've struggled with is I'm a positive person. I worked as a restaurant server before becoming a dentist love people. And I was used to serving them food they wanted and drinks they wanted. And it really, as when you go from seeing three or four patients in dental school, six or seven in a residency, and then putting yourself in sometimes in front of 25 to 30 different personalities a day and managing a lot of times the negative energy, the emotional energy, John, sometimes people are afraid of money. Other times people are afraid of pain. Other times people have a, a whole emotional thing about their mouth and teeth. So that is a challenge that I work to overcome and not take those feelings home with me, which is hard sometimes, even at 43. Um, so that was a challenge of managing energy. This could go for team energy too, right? Because the dental team is tough. And then to just put it in a different word, I mean, I have this little guy here that I talk about, this is what being a dentist is like, you know, your mind skills, your word skills, and your hand skills. And then in the hand skills part, Running a dentist diner as a general dentist means you got to make all different types of procedures, crown, filling, implant. And it takes time to realize you don't have to be good at everything. And sometimes young and early in my career, I thought I got to know how to do this well and this well. And then I would judge myself. And then over time, I've really focused on a lot of dental implants and removable and overdentures. But I think dental school doesn't set you up for understanding how difficult that is, is to shift gears clinically all the time as a general dentist. And I don't know how many people you interview. I know a lot. But if we did a happiness meter of specialist versus general dentist, I think a lot of times people would think it's because specialists make more money. But specialists will tell you, it's not about the money is that I get to focus on just these few procedures and master them. So that would be the managing energy on the emotional side. And then the technical side of be having to be good at so many different things. So uh, I also hear that uh, you have this valiant mission to unite um, our dental profession uh, yes. via, you know, the social media platforms, which I love. And I know you're going to get into Facebook jail here in a second that we were kind of teasing yeah. out. Uh, you know, as you know, Paul, there, social media gets a lot of, of negative um, conversation. But yeah. that being said, in the same sentence, there are so many amazing things that can be done, have been done to connect people in a positive yeah. way. Uh, and so you're, you're kind of on that mission. I'd love to have you share a little bit about that sure. and, and, and what you're working on. And then maybe, uh, you know, the, the value of what that will mean in regards to so many different dental professionals learning a lot of things that they didn't know. And like you said, even 10, 15 years ago, didn't have those cell phones in, in an effort to be able to learn all this information. Yeah. Love that question. I use one of my uh, idols, uh, the same name as me, Paul Revere. So I live in Center City, Philadelphia. And during the pandemic and other times, especially during the pandemic, we have a six and a two-year-old. So what did we have to do early in the pandemic? Someone had to take the two-year-old out of the house before she ruined the day for everyone. That was me. So we would stroll around the historic areas, which I know is something that I'm going to always remember as a positive part of this. But it's the whole story of the founding fathers right where I live. And Paul Revere, in this book, uh, Never Eat Alone, which is a great book, Never Eat Alone, they tell you the story of Paul Revere. And there were two Paul Revere's. There was one guy on horse telling people the British was coming, and there was Paul Revere. But Paul Revere was a classic connector from Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Tipping Point. So people would let him into certain inns. They let him put this special light on. So he was telling this story that we all remember is the British are coming. I wanted to tell the story of let's collaborate, not compete. Let's be nicer to each other. And I was trying to get the story out since 2005, well before Facebook, but I was doing it with a rock and a stick in Philadelphia before social media came. So when social media came, I was able to share this on Facebook. And I never believed that what would happen and go from two members to currently 30,000 members, but I'm a big results oriented person. So what has social media brought me, Paul Goodman? Okay. It's brought me friendships with people I would never have met. It's brought me dental knowledge from people, from knowledge I couldn't have gotten. It's brought me resources to my dental practice, like eAssist helped people with insurance billing. I didn't really even know this was a thing up until like two years ago. So if people mm -hmm. take a look at the whole nacho plate, majority of social media, awesome. But there are some spicy toppings and some stale nachos. So you also have to, and it's not easy, it's like I'm someone who's liked to work out their whole life, but sometimes you could work out too much and injure yourself. Sometimes you can put too much energy into something. 
And I believe we're living through a, a communication age like the Industrial Revolution where we don't know how to harness all of this power because, you know, uh, I mean, also, Johnny, I'm, I'm positive and you're positive. But like if I was wearing this outfit at a C course and 20 people told me look great and one person told me that's a stupid sweater, I would remember that comment. Right. And yep. that can happen out there. So my goal, though, is to get Dennis talking, get us understanding that. We can disagree with a foundation of respect and then also have tough conversations. I mean, I love one of my other was Mr. Rogers, right? Mr. Rogers was just awesome. Mr. Rogers talked about gun control, inequality. I mean, he wasn't just a kid show guy when you go watch the Tom Hanks movie or Will You Be My Neighbor. But he somehow was able to create this neighborhood where people felt safe to discuss stuff. So if I can be anything like that for dentists, that really is my true mission to make them feel like they're not alone and we can have tough conversations and still get along as people. Yeah, I love that. And so it leads me to now understanding this Facebook jail thing, right? Your mission to do all these positive things, learn a lot of positive things from people, other dental, you know, dental colleagues that would have you that have learned from you and likewise. So let's talk about that. I'm, I'm curious. It, what Facebook, it's interesting. So people, when they heard this, they think, okay, the nacho guy, isn't he supposed to tell us be nice? So it's kind of like someone got caught accidentally parking in a spot they didn't know. And I, maybe this will help someone because I didn't know this. So I post a lot on Facebook in my group and other groups. And I know some things that can get people uh, muted or banned or, or temporarily taken off of Facebook. Well, what was funny to me was I was rushing to the gym and one of my Facebook members said, when I think that I don't use 50% of what I learn in dental school, I die a little inside. And I replied to it, me too, die and cry. But I guess the AI bots of Facebook caught it as a threat and they immediately said I couldn't post for seven days even because there was no context to it. And I don't fault them for that because I mean, it's very hard. People kind of like don't like the middle a lot, John, but people say, Facebook regulates too much. Well, it's your choice, like Gary Vee says, to be on it. You know how they cannot regulate you? Don't be on the app, right? But right. then they say they don't regulate enough. And probably that's right too, because even if it's a free platform, there can still be some very, very problematic stuff happening between people. Right. Where do they right. step in? You know, if somebody has their life in danger, if somebody's creating some sort of mass hysteria mm -hmm. that could have an impact. So mm -hmm. I don't envy their positions. And I'm kind of someone who likes to see things from a broad picture and see that the people at Facebook or Instagram or any of these places have a really, really hard job to manage all of these people using their platform all the time. So it was yeah. seven days. It was good for me. I actually, to be honest, for you, I kind of enjoyed the break. So I have to thank them a little bit. So it was a nice break <laughs> for seven days. Did you did you journal? Did you like, you know, take up a new I hobby? Did you busy? I wanted no, to do so good, so good. I wanted to do a joke where I rememorized the Krebs cycle with my free time because that's we had to memorize the Krebs cycle in dental school. So I should have done that. I should, I should have, I, I do have this closet uh, or this um like a shelf in our house that I've been promising to clean up my stuff for a decade. So I should have done that, but I didn't. I actually did use the time. I think it's good, like going to a different restaurant. I've been exploring Clubhouse more, new social media platform, exploring TikTok more. So I used it to, I use Facebook and Instagram a lot, and I should. Uh, expand into LinkedIn, Clubhouse, a TikTok, because you just have a new way to share your message. Yeah. I thought maybe too in those seven days, you were like, you know what? That's it. I'm going to go try to figure out how to dunk in basketball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like maybe have. this is my, this is maybe my moment, man. This is my moment. This is the only hoop I could do it on here. I don't know if you can see in the background, but this is the only hoop I could possibly do it on here. So <laughs> that's Maurice Cheeks jersey, my favorite player from the Sixers. So. I love it. I love it. All right. So let, let's wrap with this. So you said you're going to be speaking live, which is awesome. I'm sure you're really excited about that. And so I'm going to frame it out like this. So uh, you've built this following of individuals. Um, they love the brand that you built. Um, and, and so you, you have this opportunity. You're on this live stage and in front of all your colleagues and you get an opportunity to share just one thing uh, that you would share with them. We'll call it advice. We'll, whatever it may be. Uh, with where we are right now, right? With where we are in life, with where dentistry is right now, with everything that you learned, what would be one thing that you would share? First of all, this is a phenomenal question. And I can't wait to see other people answer this question on your awesome show because it's so good. And it would just be this. Uh, talk to patients like people, not weird other dentists, and magic will happen. Talk to the patients in your office like people, 
not weird other dentists and magic will happen. So dentists often, because we never exercise this skill, do not put things in patient-friendly terms. They often over-focus on the negative, right? So I always say, live your life in the most, not in the lightning. Of course, be responsible. If it's going to lightning, bring an umbrella. Don't go outside. Don't be on the beach. But don't never go out of your house because one day it lightning. So unfortunately, in dental school, we're always focused on what goes wrong. Your crown prep's not good enough. One time an implant failed. Where I'm always thinking about how often do things go well and share that with patients. And then also, in a business world, maybe we've shifted statuses with insurances because of the pandemic, it's not an excuse. It's because I don't have the same team numbers that I used to have. I don't have the same appointments availability. So when I tell a patient who's on spoiled guac PPO insurance, we no longer are an accepting provider. Uh, you can still utilize it here. I have an authentic discussion as to the why. And I make my operatory like trying to hang out with friends. And uh, that is what I would tell them. Put on your person hat, talk to patients like people, see what happens. That would be my best piece of advice. Yeah, I love that. And I think in closing, could you share with everybody how they can learn more about you, uh, you know, your, your, your Facebook group, all of that in an effort to be able to, um, to, to follow the great work that you're doing. And, and most importantly, I think, as I know, as you have learned, um, there is a lot of responsibility that, that comes with building that follower you know, with all those followers, sure, right? Yeah. You, you, you know, you get to that point and then uh, you wake up one day and you're like, wow, this is pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, just share with everybody how they well, can I learn more that, about John. it. I call it as a speaker going to speak. I speak, you know, if you're speaking in front of hundred people, 10 people are too cold, 90 people are too hot. The cold people want it turned up. I say, what about the hot people? So in with that vein, I would love for people to learn more about what we do. Dentalnachos.com is an easy way, but also one of the best things that happened to me during the pandemic is I got to be interviewed on Tea with Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk's one of my idols. And I got the community text line that he did. I applied for six months. I finally got it. So people wanted to text nachos to 215-543-6454. They get a $143 CE gift from us because that's Mr. Rogers' favorite uh, number because it means I love you. So text Nachos to 215-543-6454 and you can get connected with us. Paul, thanks so much. I know the ESS team really appreciate you taking the time to come on. You're doing great stuff for the profession. This has been a pleasure and best of luck, man. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much, Sean. All right. See you, Paul.